My name is Sarah Andargolian and I traveled to Armenia to document the rise in poverty. The first time I went to Armenia was back in 1994 and that was um, right after the collapse of the Soviet Union. Armenia became an independent country in 1991. <laughs> Since 94, I've gone back a lot of times, and in 2002, I had the opportunity to actually buy a one-way ticket and move to Armenia and live there for two and a half years. It was certainly an intense experience living there on many levels, not just because I have an Armenian background and so it was my opportunity to really get to know my people and my culture uh, on a deeper level. On a, a more personal level, I really found my creative inclinations in Armenia and that's when I started doing photography and basically traveling to corners of the country to photograph people's day-to-day -day lives. Recent World Bank report indicates that about 28% of the population in Armenia is now living in, in poverty. I witnessed that by uh, visiting several families that were struggling with the effects of poverty. One of the families I met was Armine Harutunian's family. <laughs> She has six children. She wasn't able to find any work and uh, wasn't able to feed the kids. Another family was Ruzana's family. She and her four children live in a one-room tin shack uh, 
uh, on the outskirts of Yerevan, the capital of Armenia. They lived a half hour walk from any water source. Me <laughs> The other fact that was striking about them is that they had no toilet. What was particularly ironic about Ruzana's home is that it's literally a tin shack in an open field with probably the best view of Mount Ararat that I've ever seen. <laughs> It towers over Yerevan and uh, can be seen with its um, snow-capped peaks. And it's really a symbol of hope. And it was very intense for me to see this extremely destitute family living in the shadow of, of this very, very beautiful mountain. Another one of the families who I met was Narina Simonian's family. She is a single mother with four children. Previously, she was married and was uh, dealing with a very violent husband. Her husband consistently beat her and raped her, and with the help of a local nonprofit, she was able to get a legal divorce and leave her husband. She moved with her four children to uh, a dilapidated house in a, a village just outside of Yerevan. There's one photograph in particular that I'm drawn to of of Narine uh, with the accordion she used to play when she was a young girl. And she's sort of looking up and there's a ray of light in her face. And for me, that's a, an image that's um, significant, not only because you see the um, sort of dilapidated circumstances in which she's living, but the accordion in some way seemed to empower her at that moment when I, when I photographed her. 
One of the trends of poverty that I saw in Armenia um, with the families who I photographed was more and more of them are actually living off of nearby garbage dumps. One of the people who I actually experienced this with was Grigor. He has three children, wife, mother, they all live together in a shack. Grigor invited me to come along with him one morning. He goes to the garbage dump at 6 in the morning, and just like a regular work day, we'll stay there until 5 p.m., and he collects whatever he can find. When I actually arrived to Grigor's home to accompany him to his makeshift workplace, he had put on a clean shirt, he, had, he was newly sh shaved, and he was clearly waiting to take a guest to the place where he goes to work every day. It was perhaps one of the most difficult things that I did, trying to translate through photography for, for um, you know, viewers, uh, the intensity of this place, because it was a, it went on for miles. The emotions that were going through me at that moment were really shock that this young man has to do this every day and deal with this every day. And um, I really hope that the images that I shot of him can give people the sense of uh, what that might be like for somebody like him. With a little bit of help, many of these families are able to pull themselves out of the poverty-stricken situations they find themselves in. One family who I met, the Garabetian family, I actually saw a lot of hope in where they were and where they're going. With help from several nonprofit organizations, they now have their own land, they plant their own food every day, they have a cow that allows them to have milk and dairy products. The children are well clothed, they go to school every day, they're educated. We can do something about the situation and we can help empower these families um, to, to empower themselves really. <laughs> Spasse <laughs> <laughs>